This is Stephanie from statisticshowto.com. In this video, I'll show you the probability of two events occurring together. I'm going to show you a couple of examples, but before I do, I need to refresh your memory on what independent and dependent events are. I also need to show you when you should multiply and when you should add. Dependent events are connected to each other. For example, in order to win at Monopoly, you have to play the game. If you don't play the game, you can't win. The probability of finding a parking space depends on you driving in the first place. If you don't drive a car, then there's not much point in finding a parking space. And finally, choosing two cards from a standard deck, choosing anything, cards, bingo balls, doesn't really matter. If you're choosing and you do not replace the items, then that is a dependent event. Independent events are just the opposite. They're not connected at all. For example, playing Monopoly isn't connected to winning at Scrabble. Your odds of winning the lottery isn't connected to you winning at Monopoly at all. And finally, choosing a card or choosing anything and then choosing something different, like choosing from a different deck of cards or rolling a die, they're not connected, so they're independent events. The second thing you need to know when you're working out the probability of two events occurring together is when you should multiply and when you should add. Very basically, you add when the problem involves or and you multiply when the problem involves and. This is a very general rule. Let me give you a quick example with rolling die. If you wanted to roll a die and find out the probability of rolling a 1 or a 6, then you would add the probabilities. So if we rolled a 1 or a 6 on a die, the probability of rolling a 1 is 1, 6. And we're going to add the probability of rolling a 6, which is also 1, 6 that equals 2 6 or 1 third. Now we're adding probabilities here but these events don't occur together in fact they can't occur together if they're on the same die if you just roll it once it's impossible to have a 1 or a 6 so in the vast majority of cases when you're asked to figure out the probability of two events occurring together you're going to multiply. Now let's say I rolled the die twice and I wanted to know the probability of getting a 1 and then getting a 6. So it's a 1 and then a 6 with two rolls of the die. My probability is still 1 6 of getting a 1. Then I'm going to multiply the probability of getting a 6 on the second roll, which is 1 6. and that is 1 over 36. So that's the basics. Let's look at a couple of actual problems. I have a sample problem here. The odds of you getting a job you applied for are 45% and the odds of you getting the apartment you applied for are 75%. What is the probability of you getting both the new job and the new car? Well the AND is the giveaway there. We need to multiply. I'm going to change these to decimals. 45% is 0.45 and I'm going to multiply that by 0.75. When I do that on a calculator I get 0.3375. This is a decimal as a percentage that would be 33.75 percent. Now if you think about this these two events are independent. The odds of you getting a job have nothing to do with the odds of you getting an apartment. So this is an example of the probability of two independent events occurring together. So what happens with dependent events? Well the formula is exactly the same. You're going to multiply with one caveat. The equation you use is going to be slightly different. So the probability of your two events, I'll call them event A and event B, is going to equal the probability of event A happening multiplied by the probability of event B. But 
it's the probability of B once A has happened. That's what this bar means in the equation. It might look complicated, but you're actually just doing the same thing as you did up here for independent events. You're going to find your two probabilities. But the second probability is going to be the probability after the first probability has happened. So let me show you an example of that. 85% of employees have health insurance. That's our event A. Out of those 85%, 45% had deductibles higher than 1,000. Well, we're already given the probability of B once A has happened. So the equation is exactly the same. It's just a matter of extracting the figures. I'm going to change these to decimals again, 0.85. Times 0.45, that equals 0.3825. Now, usually in elementary statistics, you're going to be given this percentage, you're going to be given the probability of B given A. It's very unusual for you to be asked to figure that out for yourself, but if you're not quite sure what you're doing with these probability problems. It can be a great idea to make a sketch or drawing of the problem. Here's a diagram of the group of people, 85% of the population. So this green and yellow area equals 85%. And this red area, the people that don't have insurance, it's 15%. So this area and this area equals 85%. Now, out of this 85%, this yellow area, the 45%, is the subgroup with these high deductibles over $1,000. Now, if you do a drawing like this, you could take an educated guess that this yellow area is, if I eyeball it, it looks like it's around 30% of the pie. That would have been my guess. So you would expect your answer to be around 30%. Well, the actual answer is 38.25 and this was just a rough diagram. If I had done something else, like I had added 0.85 plus 0.45, I would get 1.1.3, 1 130%, and you can see if I'd have added, that doesn't make any sense at all because this is not 130%. That's a couple of examples of the probability of two events occurring together. You can find lots more examples of probability events on our website, statisticshowto.com.